Hey guys, Woods Farm here. Just back out working on Project 222. Uh, we're midway through November and deer hunting season's over and just starting to work on the scout car again. So there's a few uh, odds and ends that we got to sort out um, when it comes to the mechanical stuff. Um, I've got to order some bushings and we got to work on the shift linkage and get that working out a little bit better. And then I think we're going to go ahead and work on the floors. Um, we've got some uh, diamond plate or tread plate, whatever you want to call it. I've scavenged up some over the last year. Not quite sure if it's exactly enough to do the whole floor, but I'm going to start working on it and then I'll know what kind of materials I need to order to finish things off. Um, if we get lucky, we might be able to do the whole thing. So these plywood panels are going to get replaced with that uh, tread plate. I'm also going to start closing in the, uh, the tunnel here that uh, covers up the main drive shaft. So we're just going to use some basic sheet metal to enclose that. And that will kind of be the first step. However, before we get to any of that, I'm going to play around with this. Um, I picked these up at an auction a few months back. Um, with the intention of hopefully making it easier to work on the in the garage on the scout car um, I've already assembled the The other two, but I got a full set of four For a really good deal at an auction and I'm hoping this will let us move the chassis around in the garage and Make it easier to work on it. We can move it, you know over to one side or the other um, Depending on where we're working Instructions, we don't need these. These are pretty straightforward to put together. It's just, and I mean, there's nothing to it, really. It's just a piece of plate steel and four casters. They're not even that high quality, but anyways, I'm gonna put this together and then we're gonna get the scout car on these. We'll see how well it moves around in the garage. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if we can move this thing around in here. Okay, it might be a two person job, but still. So it's difficult to change directions, but yeah, by myself I can move it around. Okay, so just starting to work on the floor. Here's a, a big section of uh, tread plate or diamond plate. And I scavenged this a little while ago and I have just did some laying out. And uh, these are the, kind of the gross cuts. And then some of these pieces are going to get uh, trimmed down a little bit more from here. but. I'm actually pretty pleased this one plate is going to get probably 90% of the floor done. So that's good because this stuff's super pricey and uh, I got a wicked deal on this piece. So like I said, just being real careful about the layout to make sure we can squeeze every little bit of material out of this plate. Okay guys, any guesses how many cutoff discs this is going to take? I'm saying five. And we'll see. And ended up being four and a half, we'll say, uh, discs. So yeah, it's pretty hard cutting through this thicker material with these zip cuts. But uh, we've bought a whole bunch of them on sale, and uh, 
I've got a pretty big reserve now of zip cuts and unfortunately this is a, really the only way I have to cut this material. Um, I do have a plasma cutter but it's very crappy and honestly um, it would just it would cut through this material but it would leave such a jagged uh, rough edge with slag that the cleanup work it just doesn't save time really so ultimately I really the most efficient and best thing I have right now is the zip cut now for those of you who are wondering I'm pretty sure that this uh, kind of standard tread plate pattern doesn't match the actual uh, German style I'm not sure if you could actually even source that um, I have seen some patterns that are slightly different but generally I think nowadays this pattern is pretty much the standard so it's going to be a reasonable facsimile to the original and it's going to be functional so that's what we're going with okay so here's the front plate and just realized I screwed up and there's the pattern and that would be the top uh, and basically the way I transferred it onto this piece um, I should have had the diamond facing up but this is the back uh, therefore it's reversed so I realized it after I had already cut the edges and cut that hole now luckily I checked the pattern and I flipped it over and these curved parts here they're almost symmetrical they're not quite but they're very close so I can work with it so this is a really big piece of material and I'm gonna have to salvage it unfortunately so really what I'm left with doing is cutting the opening and this opening here is for the gear shift um, where it gets bolted on and goes through and goes to the back to the transmission I'm gonna have to recut the hole on the right side and I'm going to take this little plate and weld it back in place. Um, luckily that plate, I cut it out pretty pr carefully and uh, it should just fit right back in there and I should be able to weld it down and hopefully it's not too noticeable. But these are the kind of things you kind of, you miss sometimes and uh, it definitely pays to, you know, take your time. But again, I've dealt with this before where you know you, you accidentally meet, flip a pattern over the wrong way or something and you ended up with it in reverse or a mirrored image of it so anyways I can salvage it so not too big of a deal okay so there's that hole that was cut in error and I patched it and I've got the other side cut still really ticked off that that happened that's uh, kind of a rookie mistake but just gonna have to deal with it okay that's what the piece looks like uh, flipped over on the top side um, the little patch doesn't look too bad once it gets painted it should blend in a lot better um, I will note that it did start to warp this plate which is like at least 1 8 it's fairly thick material just that little bit of welding and I was stopping I was doing about an inch and stopping for a minute and you know another inch but it put enough heat into this material that this thick plate started to actually buckle and warp a little bit upwards so you have to be really careful um, welding um, this kind of sheet metal and plate because you put too much heat into it and it will uh, distort and warp out of shape so it's kind of a mess right now um, I was kind of working all over the place but I decided I'm just gonna slow down and start working from the front and make my way back so the first step is to get that front large front plate into position I'm gonna to have to take disassemble the uh, shift mechanism and it's probably gonna take a couple of test fits to get it to fit correctly because of those kind of curved areas it kinda of has to just kinda of sit right in there just right um, once that plates in place uh, the ones going a little further back uh, shouldn't be as difficult Okay, so on the driver's side, it looks pretty good. Um, passenger side, 
it needs a little trim right up in here and a little bit up at the top top edge leading edge there and the idea is that should just sit flush so I'm gonna pull it out and trim it down and we'll try to fit it in again Okay, that's all fitted in place. Um, it's a little bit of a bow in it, so I've got some clamps holding it down. And I've also got some weight on it to kind of push it down. And there's a cross bit brace. I'm going to weld it from the bottom onto that cross brace. And it should hold it down and keep the spring out of it. I've been staring at it for about 10 minutes, kind of hesitating to actually weld it down. Trying to think if there's anything I'm missing. Um, you can see where it overlaps the opening for the uh, the shifter. Um, I've got these holes drilled out. I just marked them from the bottom and drilled them out extra large. And I test fitted it. Um, so everything lines up. You can just bolt that right back on, on top. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and start welding it down. Okay, so there's the floors. Um, the front plate is welded down and I've got all the back plates cut and fit. I still have to do a little bit of grinding along the edges and I've still got to do some welding and some fabricating. The center plate, that's going to be bolted down. Uh, that way you can remove it for maintenance and you'll have access to the uh, transfer case uh, along with this passenger side plate here uh, this is going to also be bolted down you'll be able to unbolt it move it and it'll give you access to the top of the fuel tank and also some of the shift linkage and all that kind of mechanical stuff this plate here is going to be welded down there's no reason to have it re removable um, I may actually have to heat it up. It's a little bit warped here and doesn't quite sit flat. Um, but I'll get that welded down and sort it out. And the plate on the other side here, that's also going to get permanently welded down. There's nothing underneath there that needs to be accessed for maintenance purposes. So all that's really left is this front section here. Um, I'm debating on doing that with the thicker tread plate that I have. Or maybe just using some... Um, 14 gauge or 16 gauge steel to close that in and there's also this back section over top of the transmission that needs to get closed in but aside from that the floors are completely uh, done 
I still haven't decided if I'm going to move on to working on the exhaust or am I going to actually start using some of the material that I have and start working on the actual body panels. Um, talking with my son, kind of strategizing, and we're thinking that we're going to do the center panels first and then move our way forward and backward from the middle. Um, so these, there's really four segments here, the top section and then the larger bottom section on both sides, um, basically just rectangles. Uh, super easy to get that cut out and put in place. And then I think I'm probably gonna start moving forward, but that'll uh, depend on the patterning and just fitting the patterns to the material I have and what's the most efficient. I'm not sure I may end up actually going to the boards the back. If you want to see more videos of Project 222, definitely like and subscribe. Um, at this point, we're going to be probably putting out videos at least every two weeks as we continue to work on the project over the winter. And as always, thanks for watching.